Today we hack Drupal and persist our access, among many other things. Let's get started. Our target is hosted on CTF29 room on RootMe. The first thing I'm going to do is explore what this hostname has. What's the attack surface? I like to do that with nmap and let's target room 20. Is it 24? Oops, 29. And we'll wait for the results. Normally they should be fairly quick because I'm using the quick version right here. This is just an alias I've created to make things a little bit quicker. All right, we already see four ports. Yay! We have the results here. OpenSSH, uh, we have Apache, we have RPC bind, I'm not sure what this is, and we have Tomcat. Ooh, that's an interesting service, because I know if I go to port 8080, I already see some interesting links, including the manager web app, which is hosted under slash manager HTML, and normally we're presented with this authentication page, and the credentials are Tomcat, Tomcat, oh, it works, but I get access denied. Hmm. I guess uh, configuration file has been changed to disable manager GUI. All right, let's pivot to port 80 and we land on a lame user interface. Who still develops in this style? Blue box 2 with love from Indie Shell Lab. We have a search feature, we have a post here that points to slash node slash two. I wonder if there is node one. Mm. Page not found. Okay, uh, ooh, there is a login feature here. Let's use it. And we're presented with a login, but oh, we can create a new account. Okay, let's try that. So we need to provide an email. Going to use a dummy email with a dummy username. Going to use something I can remember. Please subscribe. Oh, there's an upload feature. Can I upload something? Something like a PHP file? For security reasons, your upload has been renamed to ws.php.txt. Okay, only files with the following extensions are allowed, PNG, GIF, JPEG, but I can't help but notice that our file has been indeed uploaded. So if I open it in a new tab, it's just displaying the content of the text, PHP info. If I remove the extension, would that work? Nope, it says page not found. Okay, let's continue, create a new account. Only files with exist, yeah. Okay, let's remove that for now. I wonder what's the request behind that removes files. Maybe that could be vulnerable to path traversal, but let's just create a new account for now. Unable to send email. Yeah, probably because there is an SMTP server problem. Thank you for applying to your, your account is currently pending for approval. Oh, we need approval. A welcome message with further instructions has been sent to your email address. Yeah, but the SMTP server seems down, so we don't receive any email. We have a search feature right here. Our input gets returned, so I wonder if we can put some XSS. Maybe we can send it to the admin. Nope. The image is properly formatted right here, so I don't think this is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. The output is properly encoded here. Let's revisit the registration form. I think it's an interesting one. Well, before that, let's go to the reset your password feature. It's always a good idea to map the entire features of the application. That way you, we get a general overview of the attack surface. Instead of laser focus your efforts on one feature and get t a tunnel vision that would prevent you from finding maybe low hanging fruits, other vulnerabilities. Password reset instruction will be sent to your registered email. Okay, uh, let's use our previously registered email and submit. So do you have AA is blocked or address not been activated yet? Oh. So it's validating if the email exists and if it is valid or not. Well, this is an enumeration opportunity. So maybe we can do admin at, I don't know, just let, let's put just admin and see. Unable to send email. Yeah, because there was an error that was not a correct email, I guess. So this is a black box approach, meaning that we don't have access to the code. I wonder what is this website? Is it like, is it built from scratch or is it like based on a framework? Um, oh, on the bottom we have the contact form, but we also have here powered by Drupal. Mm. Let's go to the contact for now. 
Oh, we can send uh, something. Maybe we can send something to the admin. Let's preview that. So this is our message. Can we like inject something here? Preview. Nope, it's properly output encoded. Let's try to send it anyways. Unable to send the email and your message has been sent. Yeah, I think the email sending feature is broken. Click on read more here. No. So it's powered by Drupal, but which version? Let's uh, see the content of the source. Oh, straight up, we have Drupal 8. What is the latest version of Drupal? The official version, I guess, is 9.5.0. Uh, so that's one major uh, update ahead of our current version right here, version 8. So I wonder if there are any vulnerabilities there. Uh, let's look for public exploits. And we land on CVE 2018, 7600. And it says here, protection only for educational purposes. Yeah, yeah. Proof of concept based on checkpoint article, uncovering Drupal get on two. Proof of concept, not working on 7.x. Yes, we have eight. So that should be good, but we're not going to blindly like run it. I'm going to first read what it does because that's what hackers do. You never trust public exploit on the internet. So it's a Python script that asks you for URL and then it's trying to target the, apparently the register. Let me zoom in a little bit. It's targeting the user registration. It's sending the payload and in the mail markup, it's running a command here. Do you recognize anything interesting? Yep, it's using a Linux command. Echo this content right here, an emoji, and pipe it to a file called hello.txt. All right, so it's posting that URL with the payloads, and then it's requesting to see if the hello.txt file has been created. If yes, then we get the message check the URL to hello.txt. Okay, so for me, it sounds benign. Well, benign for us. I will just go ahead and copy it and paste it on my box. So before I run it though, I just want to make some changes. First of all, we don't need those, yeah. So we need to specify the URL for the proxies. I think I'm going to enable the proxies so that I see exactly what the request looks like. And yep, that would be it. I'm going to run it. Yeah, I think we need to use Python 3. So it's trying to connect, but we have connection refused. And that's because I don't have burp running. So I'm going to do that real quick. So now if I retry the same exploit, paste in my host. Oh, I think it's vulnerable because we've got check that URL right here. And behind the scenes, we can see that indeed our post request has been sent with our malicious input. Okay, what do we have in the response? We have the output of echo. So I guess that this would be indeed vulnerable. If we go to hello.txt, we indeed get the content of our echo command. So that means that we've essentially achieved remote code execution. So if I try something like ID to see what is the user we're running with, I can indeed see that I'm running with the user W data, which is a limited user on web servers on Linux. What do we have in etc pass WD? Tomcat 7, what's this? It seems like I have only the last line of the file. Hmm. Well, that's a bummer, but uh, can you think of a way to like print the entire content? I mean, we can certainly go with the command head and specify the number of lines we want. So in this case, we want just the first line and that would return the first line, which is root, right? But we want the entire file. We, we don't want to loop on the number here. That would be very lame. Well, we can use the same technique as the exploit. We can redirect this to hello.txt. Why not? So let's send this. I already have the request here, so I just send it to the repeater and play with it on burp directly. So if I send, I indeed get the entire file right in front of me. So what are the users we have here? We have a bunch of them. 
We have Indie Shell here who has been bash like root. We have Administrator who is apparently running PostgreSQL. Do we have like access to that? I'm going to ls the content of that file or folder and redirect the output to t txt oh sorry hello.txt yeah 9.3 etc etc um, that would be very lame to start you know digging using that web shell i'm going to try to receive a reverse shell so i'm going to expose a local port using ngrok and i'm going to take that host and port generate my reverse shell it's just taken from pentester monkey and I'm going to listen on that port 8443 and let's run that command right here. If we send it, do we get something back? Nope. Oh, what a bummer. We don't have a reverse shell. Well, I think we're stuck with this lame shell. Anyways, so remember from our first enumeration in the first episode, we had Tomcat. So I'm going to find the file that has the name tomcatusers.xml and I'm going to put that into our hello.txt file. I just want to read its content with some luck. We might be able to edit it and enable the administration dashboard. So if I see the content, yeah, I just forgot to specify the location. It's taking some time because it's uh, trying to find it on the system. And if we see the results, we can indeed copy the file and see what we have as permissions to access it. So it's owned by root and Tomcat but we don't have access to it. We can't even read it. What a bummer. Okay, well, what can we do other than that? I think we're stuck with some enumeration to do. So let's uh, rerun the find command with this time suid bit and let's put the result into hello.txt. Let's send it. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, things here, things that we're We've seen in many previous videos, but do you notice something different here? We have a script or an executable, I don't know what it is. OPT WAC S. I wonder what this is. Let's uh, use the file command to learn more about that file. So it's a ELF 32 bit executable. All right. Can we like uh, edit it or something? I'm not sure. Let's uh, just use ls nope we can't edit it but we can run it as root and we would have root privileges but this is a big hypothesis because we need to find a vulnerability in this uh, script so let's first run it and see what we get as output starting copy of root user files Ooh, that's really interesting it looks interesting let's see if we have any other output here yeah we just have this output so it's starting to copy root user files, but what is doing exactly? With some hope, we might be able to find something in the strings of this binary. So if we fetch that file, we have a bunch of things right here. But uh, do you notice anything that pops up? Yes, we can see that we have the exact command right here. It's copying using the SCP, um, the entire file folder under root, all folders under the root directory to localhost on var backup. Okay, let's verify if we have anything under var backup. As you can see, we don't even need a reverse shell. We are uh, trying to do what we have to do, but it's not always mandatory to have a web shell, um, a reverse shell, I mean. We have nothing under that folder, var backup. Okay, what did we have before? So it's trying to copy that folder, but uh, do you notice anything vulnerable here? If you've seen my previous video about privilege escalation, you'll be able to answer this question. So basically we're using SCP here without an absolute path, which means that we can define our own version of SCP. So here's how it will go. Because we already have port SSH open, the content of the script or the, the malicious, malicious SCP 
file would echo the content of my public key to root dot ssh dot authorized keys. Well, before that, I just want to make sure that we create that folder dot ssh. So the script would create the folder if it doesn't exist, and then we'll echo the public key, which I'm going to put right now to authorized keys file. That way I will be able to SSH into the server as root, hopefully. So I'm just going to grab my public key. And by the way, you can generate your own key using SSH-keygen and specify the name. We don't want a passphrase and it will automatically generate this for you. And the public key is this one. Well, we can use that or I can use my own that I generally use in CTFs. So I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste it right here. We're going to echo that and put it in a file that we can name SCP. Okay, let's send this. And do we have the file SCP now in the web root? Yep, so this is our script make the directory and then echo that and redirect it to our file. Now you notice that we have spaces here and that's because we haven't encoded our payload. We need to encode it properly in order for our script to be copied. So I'm going to take that part right here and control U to encode it. Send it and if we retry now, we can indeed see that we have the correct formats. So with that said, we will define a new path value environment variable that will contain our current directory, which is var www. So I'm going to say, hey, path would contain the content of the old path value plus, I'm um, sorry, I will start with the value of pwd, my current directory, and then append the old value. And after that, I'm going to run opt slash s. That would allow me to force the script under opt s to load my path environment variable and look for the SCP executable under the current directory. So I'm just going to redirect the output to hello.txt and see what we get. So it's just printed the normal output of our script, starting copy of root user files. But instead of copying them, I guess that our exploit, if we're lucky, would work. Now, let's verify that with ssh ctf29.rootme.org with the root user. Let's accept the fingerprint and it doesn't work. I might have done a mistake right here. So that's redirection. I'm going to use T command instead of a redirect. And let's rerun our command. And after that, I'm going to execute on my final attack. Now, if everything goes well, we should be able to SSH. So what do we have under SCP? We'll echo the content to root ssh authorized keys. Yeah, we need to change the permissions of our malicious SCP to executable in order for it to be executed. Let's send it. And now with our third attempt, let's retry to SSH. And we are in. Perfect. So if I go to slash root, as you can see, I am indeed in the root directory. Um, I'm really curious to know what is the content of the Tomcat users file. So it's there, I'm going to cat that. And so, as you can see, we have the username Tomcat and password Tomcat. This user has the role manager script. So what I can do here is change that manager script to manager GUI. Why not? I'm root. And that would allow me to persist my access. So I'm going to VI this and go directly instead of manager script, say manager GUI. Now, if I restart the Tomcat 
service. It has restarted. Let's go to port 8080 and go to manager HTML. And we indeed land on the manager interface. And we can certainly deploy our reverse shell whenever we want to. We can ha go to var ww html and we will remove the hello.txt. We will also remove the scp script, malicious script. And we also want to go to var ww, I'm sorry, var log apache. And here you can see we have a bunch of logs here. So we can rm access log, we can wipe it out. And we can also remove the error.log. We can also go to var log tomcat and do the same. So that's how you would uh, attack a box from start to finish. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next video.